Good afternoon, and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. This is episode number nine. This time, I'm going to start a series on web programming and data analysis. This first episode is going to take the D3 JavaScript library and create a presentation of pitching over time. I would like to spend the next several podcasts developing this into something that looks pretty good. And, of course, whether it looks good or not, or even makes sense, is completely up to you. If you are not a techie and are not interested in building web applications, then you may want to just kind of miss this and the next few podcasts. Um, but I do invite you to at least uh, fast forward to the end and see the finished product. Now, NPB Tracker's Patrick Newman has velocity charts at www.npbtracker.com slash data slash velocity dot php. Let's take a look at Doctin's Tanaka Masahito. We'll get the first date of 2012. And get the chart. And the chart plots the speeds according to pitch type over time. In his blog posts, accessible from the Google Plus Pro Yaku community page, Clint Holsey uses the velocities from NPB Tracker in many of his studies. One of his recent studies compares velocities to FIP and location. These are interesting, but velocities tend to be done as averages and he doesn't utilize visualization techniques yet. Since I discovered the D3JS JavaScript library at d3js.org, I've been wanting to put together a page denoting pitcher velocities in a new and perhaps more informative way. I'll let you be the judge of that. Nonetheless, this episode will be about creating such a plot. This first version is just a quick prototype to act as a proof of concept and to get familiar with D3. D3 stands for Data Driven Documents and the approach is based on manipulating the DOM document object model of an HTML5 document utilizing SVG scalable vector graphics and CSS cascading style sheets. Man, that's a lot of acronyms. But you don't need to be fluent in each of these. However, a working knowledge of JavaScript is pretty much essential. Familiarity with DOM manipulation tools such as jQuery, will certainly be useful. The first thing we're going to do is go to d3js.org and click on the examples link. This displays a very large gallery of different types of charts that can be built with D3. We're interested in the box plots chart, so click on it. You should now see an example of some boxes with whiskers moving up and down. If there's no movement going on in the example, you might want to switch to a more modern browser. What we're seeing here is the quantitative distribution with minimum, maximum, lower and upper quartile, and median values from the Michelson-Morley experiment results. We're going to change the data to be velocities per at bat, but first, let's get this up and running on our local machine. Open a text editor and cut and paste the insides of the style tags from the index HTML sample.
be sure to give credit where credit is due. This is an implementation contributed by Jason Davies. Now save this file as box.css to a new project directory, such as VT1 for Velocity Tracker first iteration. Let's create a new document. In this document, we'll enter an HTML template. I keep an HTML template in a separate template file for quick reference. Next, let's set the title to the document to Velocity Tracker. Then, copy and paste the scripts from index.html into the header of your HTML document. I like to then clean up the indentation of the tags a little bit. Because I took the CSS out of the HTML file, we need to link to the box.css file here in the header as well. I also feel compelled to clean up the HTML tags, namely the script tags, by adding type equal quote application slash javascript unquote. Now let's save the file as velocity hyphen tracker dot html. Now create a new file and copy and paste the source from box.js into it and save this as box.js. And I just realized that I saved velocitytracker.html to the wrong directory. So let's quickly go back there, save as, save it into the VT1 directory, and we're good. Hopefully you didn't make that same mistake. Finally, let's create a new file and copy and paste the morley.csv information into it and save this as morley.csv to the correct project directory. Now we need to serve these files via the HTTP protocol. If you have a server, you can just put them up there. If you're working on a Mac, 
you can open up a command prompt and type in python minus m simple http server and a port number such as 8888 then the ampersand this will run a simple server in the background back in the browser go to http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 8888 slash velocity hyphen tracker dot html if you are using the simple http server or go to velocity hyphen tracker dot html for the server of your choice you should now get five boxes with whisker charts moving up and down okay that worked but it's not displaying velocities and we still have no idea what it's doing so let's take a look at rectifying the situation go to www.japanesebaseball.com slash data slash tanaka hyphen masahiro hyphen velos v-e-l-o-s dot csv and save the data file to the project directory your browser may prompt you for the format type you do not want to save it as a web archive you want to save it as the page source furthermore if it asks you if you want to change the file type to txt say no you want to leave it as dot csv and it doesn't hurt to go to your project directory and just verify that the file got saved there properly. Now we need to go back and edit velocity-tracker.html to read in this file instead of morley.csv. While doing that, this would be a good time to learn what the script is doing. The script begins by defining margins, height, and width for the SVG canvas to be drawn on. The min and max variables are set to infinity and negative infinity, respectively, in order to initialize the vertical range of a chart. These will be set according to actual data later. Next, the canvas of the chart is initialized. Then we have the initialization of the data from our CSV file. Here we need to change morley.csv to tanaka-masahiro-velos.csv. The d3.csv function processes the data that is read in from the CSV file within the closure defined here. The csv dot for each function iterates through each row using the very first row as the variable name for each column. And we have a change to make here. The first column name is batter. The second column name is pitch. And the third column name is speed with a lowercase s. Failure to change these three lines will result in you getting no chart when you try to reload this page. Not only does the data get initialized here, but the minimum and maximum values of the data are also getting set. This is useful to dynamically create a chart where the minimum and maximum are not known at the beginning. After all of the data has been read in, the minimum and maximum values are applied to the chart for scaling. Next, the SVG canvas is initialized. Data is set to it, its size is initialized, and the canvas is inserted. The last part of the code in the main section here is to generate random data and animate the chart up and down as seen in the example. We're only interested in real data right now, so let's comment that out. I would like to utilize this later on for differentiating the pitch types, like Newman-san does, but that will be later.
With the interval function removed, there's no longer any need for the randomize or randomizer functions. So, out they go. Finally, the IQR function defines the inner quartile range for determining what velocities are outliers. And don't forget to save the changes! With these changes complete, let's reload the page and see what we get. Whoa, what's with all those outliers against the second batter? Might that have something to do with the fact that so many second batters in the game are sacrifice bunting? That was certainly an unexpected find. There are some other interesting aspects of this data, but I think that I'd like to refine this a bit more in the coming weeks. For example, I'd like to be able to see the entire graph in one view without scrolling, or what batter a given box belongs to. I also want to know how many pitches are used in the calculations of each given box, especially there toward the end. Finally, I want to see the distribution of velocities according to pitch types. This should keep me busy for a while. And now it's time for the pocket calendar. Tomorrow, February 25th, we'll see the release of John and Jim's latest Japan Baseball Weekly podcast. Jim, no, John is talking with former Nippon Ham Fighters manager Trey Hillman in an interview, and Jim and John talk about the upcoming World Baseball Classic. There's still no word from the Tsubame Gundan about a Yakult Swallows podcast coming up at the end of this month, but I do expect one either at the end of February or the beginning of March. And uh, otherwise, Open Sin has started. Open Sin is preseason games. So there should be a lot more baseball news coming up in this coming week. And that wraps up another Pro Yaki Report. This has been Michael Westbay. Take care. <laughs>